Hello and welcome to my watch reviews. My name is Mike and this is the second in a three part video series of San Martin watch reviews in time for their summer sale, which starts on the 12th of June. This one here is the SN0112 2-G. It is a brand new model from San Martin. It caught my eye straight away. There is lots to discuss with this watch. There's lots of things to like and it is another elephant in the room, but it might not be what you're thinking of. So if that sounds like your review, stay tuned because we're going to get into it right now. Now I'm going to start off with the design because I believe that this is Sam Martin's own design. This is not a homage watch. Correct me please if I'm wrong, leave a comment below, but I can't find anything that looks like this that I'm aware of. So if this is truly San Martin's own design, just look at what they can do. That is a really nice looking watch. It certainly is in my opinion. And what catches your eye is certainly that 24 hour bezel combined with a normal dive bezel. It's like a, a split bezel if you like. A really interesting feature, catches the eye. Uh, more on that later. Uh, let's start off with the sizing because to me that's also a big sweet spot because this case is 38 millimeters in diameter. The bezel is actually uh, 39 millimeters, so realistically you've got a slight overhang. But at that size, that's brilliant for most wrists. I know some of you like the big watch, but certainly people are into vintage watches like I am. Uh, 38 millimeters is a lovely place to be. Uh, this is 13.6 millimeters thick. Now that has got a, a dome sapphire crystal on it so you can probably take off 0.2 millimeters from that if you were trying to size it to the size of the case. Um, the lug to lug is a nice 46 as well and because you've got those female end links once again this is going to contour to your wrist really nicely and the lug width well that's the standard 20 millimeters so a lot of things that we've seen before with san martin they seem to be using similar cases they seem to use this bracelet a lot and those female england so they are becoming uh, a brand with more identity they're not trying to do different things too much they're doing what is working and what no doubt their customers are liking this new gmt model i think is using the same case as the retro diver that you can see on screen now this was the first san martin i reviewed on my retro watches i think and i absolutely love this watch still wear it quite a lot actually and i think it was one of their top sellers um so anyway on with the gmt let's get close on the dial and have a look at that bezel as well so that dial i think that is a very pleasant thing to look at they've got so much right here First of all, it is an enamel dial, so you've got that real deep, rich black. Uh, I'm not going to say it's flawless, because as we found out on the uh, sub homage video, the previous one, there was a few little flaws. Now, I'm not going to do the same and put this one on the microscope like I did in that video. Um, we've got the same type of indices, these applied indices. I think Sam Martin must have bought a job lot of them. Those circle ones you see on most of the watches, same with the rectangular one and the uh, the triangle one up there at 12. But again, they suit the style that they're going for and I can't criticize them. They're great. Uh, printed framing around the date. This one has got a date. We haven't got a Cyclops, thank God for that. Uh, so you've got all of the best uh, functionality, haven't you, with the GMT and the date. The usual applied logo from San Martin at 12, still like that. Nice set of sword hands, nice pointed second hand with the loom at the tip rather than the heel that some watches decide to put on. Pretty basic printed minute track, but it's clear and legible against that black dial, isn't it? So 10 out of 10, I really do like it. You can see there as well that this watch is offering 200 meters of water resistance by way of a screw down crown and a screw down case back. On to what I think is the most eye catching design element of this watch and that is that twin bezel. So you have the static part in the middle made out of stainless steel and that is the 24 hour marker so you can use it for your GMT function. 
uh, finished really nicely actually with a starburst finish as I think you can see and the numbers are stamped in and painted black really easy legible very eye-catching and then you've got your usual 60 minute dive bezel that is in a black uh, ceramic insert it's got a loom pip up there at 12 as well that also can come in a steel insert so you don't get the contrast if that's what you prefer i'll put a photograph up of the other version there if you want to see it but i think personally this one is the one to go for now there is an issue with this bezel design uh, and i'll be showing you that a little bit later on that's the elephant in the room part certainly when we go to the bench because then we've got hands on and I can demonstrate what I'm talking about. But just looking at it aesthetically, I think it's really eye-catching. No review is complete without a loom shop. So here we go. We've got BGW9, which is glowing that type of light blue. BGW9 is just a colour code. That's all that means. Um, so this is the time lapse over 20 minutes. And it does pretty well, to be fair. It sort of loses its... Uh, brightness fairly quickly goes to sort of a dull hue and stays there it's seemingly for quite some time and how about a wrist shot so here we go on my seven inch rather hairy wrist uh, that's 18 centimeters for those in metric it's a sports watch a perfect sizing i think that 39 is a real sweet spot Case finishing, as always, is totally superb with Sam Martin. And this is following their usual theme, or the theme that I've seen on most of their watches recently, which is a combination of mainly brushed surfaces with a high-polished chamfer running down the edge of the watch that you can see there. Always executed very well. Uh, looks pleasing to the eye. If you look at it from the side profile, they've got linear brushing on the sides. No crown guard on this one. I do like no crown guards. I think it's kind of a bit retro anyway uh, but it means you can grab hold of the crown a lot easier and change the time easier it's sign crown as expected uh, the case is just slightly tapering to the lugs as well which again is going to conform to your wrist absolutely perfectly um, i do think that sam martin are sort of developing a base of a watch uh, the same sort of cases same sort of bracelets to fit fit most designs whether that's ergonomics to just be able to make out design after design and just change a few aspects on the dial i don't know or whether it's just because that is actually what works and works well on people's wrists now of course if we turn the watch over then we're left with the usual case back it's always my criticism i like to see more numbers and writing on the case backs and on these we just get a plain one with a typical um, screw back crown, uh, screw back case back, sorry, that you can't remove. You can remove with a sticky ball or you can remove with the correct tools. I do have both and we will be taking the back off uh, very shortly. Just have a quick peek at the movement. Quick look at the bracelet. It's solid stainless steel throughout. It's high polished on the edges. You've got screw pins for adjustment. Go down to the clasp and we have one of their new glide lock systems and i do like this glide lock it means you can size it uh, on the fly certainly if your wrist expands a little bit in the summer through the heat the shell of that clasp is slightly longer but it's still well finished high polished edges uh, brushed and with the embossed logo on there still one of the best clasps out there on a watch of this price so talking of price let's go to the website so here we are on the san martin aliexpress store now this is a price that i believe is pre-sale you can see there it's 296 dollars so that is quite a price to pay uh, that's roughly around about 250 uk pounds um now i do have a coupon there is going to be a coupon code below that will save you 10 percent on this watch but that is only for pre-sale so if you wait till the 12th of june and onwards i have no doubt that this watch is going to be discounted further plus there's always some other coupons that you click there's one there that says extra two percent off so you're going to hopefully be able to get this down maybe to 250 dollars is that good value for money it's always difficult for me to say um i think this watch is around about a 200 pound mark watch that's what i would be 
personally prepared to pay for it but you're getting a lot for your money aren't you you're still getting stainless steel watch uh, sapphire crystal uh, ceramic bezel and now the glide lock system and the enamel dial so they just keep packing all their watches full of all the goodies and that has to come at a cost at some point so stay tuned come back for the sale please if you'd like to buy something from sam martin click on my links below uh, it's not going to cost you any more but i do get a small finder's fee and that really does help because i'm trying to raise some money to buy some different watches to do some different reviews on this channel and now it's time to talk about the elephant in the room i've been hinting to it all the way through this video and if you've already seen reviews of this watch you will know what i'm going to say so as much as I love this design aspect of this bezel, it's kind of borrowed from Doxa, I think, really, the design. Um, but it's very eye-catching, and it's certainly a feature of the watch. You have on this bezel a 60-minute scale. But when you turn the bezel, you've got 24 clicks, like it's a GMT bezel. Uh, so I don't really see the point of that, to be honest with you, because you will want to use that 60 minute bezel presumably for timing i use my bezel for that sort of thing every now and again if i want to sort of set where i was at a certain time so like now i can easily still go to the minute hand look it's just lining up between clicks which isn't ideal because if you knock that of course you can knock it back out of position so you could still use it and that's how i like i say use mine but it's not ideal so Sam Martin's created a nice looking watch full of features, but they just seem to me that they haven't thought that bit out as well as they should have. Uh, is it a, well, is it a negative point for selling? Well, possibly if you want to use the bezel properly, um, if you want to buy this watch because of the aesthetics, then I don't think it detracts too much from that. And I guess if they sell well enough, then perhaps I'll make a Gen 2, uh, which would then correct this issue. Right, so tell me what you think of that. Is that a bad, really silly idea? Is that a deal breaker for you? Be interested to know. Uh, time now to find out what it looks like on the time grapher. So this watch has got the NH34 movement in from Seiko. It's the cheap GMT movement that's doing the rounds on every single GMT watch, certainly that Sam Martin are making and everybody else are making. Uh, so I'm predicting to see some beat error. I've got Yoda out just in case he's just using the force on some vintage watches that will be coming to the other channel at some point in time. So here we go. What are we going to get? Oh. Well, immediately, that's pretty decent. Amplitude is just a touch low. I've not hand wound this. I've just worn it all day. So it's just one day's worth of uh, winding there. So it could improve if I hand wound it. But the rate... It's pretty decent. The beat error is unbelievable. Um, yeah, I'm now beginning to think, are Sam Martin regulating the watches at factory? Because I don't often see them running as good as this. And the watch I just did previously, that uh, sub homage, that was equally as impressive on the time grapher. So either Seiko have improved what they do, or somebody's tweeting the, tweaking the regulator on these before they go out the door. And at six seconds a day, okay, it's at this position. I think that's fantastic. I like them running just a little bit quicker because as they deteriorate over the years, um, your watch is going to run slower. So that five seconds at some point will actually come parity to uh, a perfect timing, oh, hopefully. So there we go. I'll just slam the uh, movement under the microscope so you can have a quick look at what that looks like. But <laughs> do you really need to see it? It's just a, a Seiko NH34. So this is what an NH34 looks like. It's identical on this side of the movement to an NH35. Uh, the rotor is a bit cleaner on this one than it was on the last watch, uh, watch review, should I say. So yeah, there's not much you can see. That's particularly interesting. Uh, if I took the dial off, there's just one extra wheel. That's all it is for, for the GMT function. If you wanted to see that in the future then next time i've got a gmt to do a review on i'll gladly take the dial off and i'll explain to you how the mechanism works so if that's something you'd be interested in 
and obviously leave uh, a comment below and I will oblige on that one. So there you go, that's the movement. Uh, let's uh, now come to the conclusion of this watch. Okay, just quickly show you the glide lock system uh, while I've got it all apart. And you just push that button in there. As you can see, it comes out and it goes in quite easily. He says, there we go. Lots of adjustment. I prefer this mechanism to the usual little pins that can be a bit annoying at times. Plus if you're using a spring bar tool like that, you can also scratch the uh, case here, not the case, the, the, the shell part. Um, there is still another complaint. So if you've watched the sub homage, I said with this glide lock, you would expect in this part, I've just undid this from here, look. Now normally you wouldn't be doing that, let's face it. Um, so you'd expect to find one of these, a spring bar, but you don't. You find what I've got in this little container. In this container, either that's the lid. <laughs> you find two little pins that almost mimic the uh, spring bar and a tiny little spring which is just there. Look, not focusing very well. And I find, well, I don't know why that is, you know, is this supposed to be a strengthening thing? Um, you know, what is that doing to um, make the watch more secure? Certainly if you were trying to pop that out for any reason at all and you weren't aware of this fact, then that spring's gonna go flying, one of these is gonna go flying and you're all lost. And um, yeah, then you're looking for something to put in there to try and sort your watch out. And these spring bars, just in case that ever happens to you and somebody's watching this in the future, 16 millimeters, that's all you need. Single shoulder and uh, that'll do the job just fine. So, final thoughts. Uh, I still like the watch. I mean, this is its main fault, isn't it? Let's face it, this bezel. And that is really sad. Um, it is a, the only major, well, it is a major negative in some respects if you want to use it for that purpose. But it's kind of like, you know, Doxa got into bed with Rolex and this is sort of the love child of that. Uh, I like this look. If this is, you know, original, um, then yeah, it's great. The sizing's perfect at 39 millimeters. I think if it was in the sale, which is coming up in a few days time, if it came down to somewhere just around 200 pounds, maybe just a little touch more, then that's probably a good sweet spot for this watch. And I think it would sell. I don't think you'd be disappointed other than obviously that. So if I stop talking about that, uh, I'm not obviously trying to sell you the watch, just giving you my opinion. Um, so yeah, you give me your opinion in the comments below. I'd be very, very interested to know what your thoughts are on this. It is a watch filled with goodies. Um, just that one, one negative really. So uh, hopefully you've enjoyed watching this one. If you have, then give it a like and leave a comment below. I read them all. I try to reply to as many as I can. And um, there is one more in this trilogy to go. And that's uh, going to be uh, a video with three watches in it, um, which is coming up only in a matter of days. And there might be a hint of a giveaway, but we'll wait and see. So stay tuned for that. Subscribe for more. I'll see you in the next video very soon. Bye for now.